I know I also really had a good summer, but I didn't miss you. Yeah, it would have been nice if we were all in the same camp, but... You know my teacher? He's so amazing. I really like him. It's almost Rosh Hashanah. Ten thousand dollars? <laughs> That's a massive flash for somebody like me. It's a big commitment, but you could do it over the year. It's, it's much more than I can do. I mean, I, I can't make such a big commitment. When you give more than you can, Hashem will do the same for you. Today, on the first day of school, there is something I would like to encourage each and every one of you Chayalim to be a part of. Especially you Chayalim who have just joined fourth grade. And that is the International Chidon Sefer Amitzvah. The Chayalim in fourth grade will learn book one. In fifth grade, we'll learn book two. In sixth grade, we'll learn book three. In seventh grade, book four. And in eighth grade, book number five. Over five years, you'll be able to master all 613 mitzvahs. We're going for the Chidon? Everyone is. But that's such a big commitment. And? I don't think I could commit. We have a promise you've got to with Tessie Tom. Do you know how many Chayalim are still not signed up to Sivas Hashem yet? Hello? Yeah, hi, is Alman there? Yeah, sure, I'll go get him. Hello? Yeah, hi. It's Ari. I'm thinking all summer about the amazing power we have. Do you think you're a real soldier? Definitely. This summer I went to an army base and I saw real soldiers. I don't think you even get what a soldier is. Ari, why don't you come to my house? We'll discuss it then, okay? Oh, the secrets were good. They printed 50,000 of these. And what is it? It's the 12 second. It's the same one as our brigades. It just has a different cover. I see. Oh, one second. together? Uh, yeah. Okay guys, let's go upstairs. Zami, like I was telling you on the phone, this summer I went to an army base and I saw real soldiers. I don't think you guys even get what a soldier is. What? <laughs> Why not? Can you imagine being a soldier of Moshe Rabbeinu, Yeshua Benun, or David HaMelech. I want you to imagine that you're standing in the front lines of battle. In front of you are the enemy soldiers. They're holding spears and swords, Ouch. bows and arrows. Some of them are much greater in size, much stronger than you. Some of them are giants. Put it this way. Moshe Rabbeinu was 10 armies tall. That's taller than from the floor to the ceiling. His staff was 10 armies tall. And he jumped 10 armies and he hit Oig only on the ankle. That means Oig's ankle was 30 armies high. What would you feel like? I'd be scared. I'd probably run for my life. But, but every soldier knows that the enemy wants to kill him. That's what a soldier is. Like it says in Ayam Yam, the difference between an Evid and a soldier. An Evid may have Kabbalah soul, but a soldier is ready to give up his entire life for the king and for his entire country. You wouldn't have to run away. You would be sent home. Why? A soldier isn't afraid of death. 
the only thing the soldier is afraid of is not completing his mission. Calling Al Khayal, Hashem's army now recruiting. Mobilizing the troops, no soldier will be left behind. The most powerful army, an unstoppable commander in chief, the strongest ammunition, following orders, no questions asked. Cute costumes and all. Costumes? Try uniforms. These are committed generals. Oh, please. What's the big deal? I don't even do my missions anyway. <sighs> See you tonight. It's a lot worse than I thought. Ari, I was thinking about what you said by Zalman's house. Where does a soldier get that incredible strength to march straight into a battle that could end his life in seconds? Yeah. What gives a soldier the inner strength not to be afraid of death? How does a soldier look his enemy in the face, march forward, and knowing that any second now, he could be killed? In one word, the answer is commitment. That's right. When a soldier goes to battle, he knows that his king and his entire country are relying on him for their existence. That's true. If a soldier loses the battle, he, his king, and the people of his country will have to be ruled by the enemy king and do what he wants. Can you imagine crowning your own enemy as a king? Could you imagine what would have happened if the Yidin would not have won the wars they did? The Yidin would have not conquered Eretz Yisrael. And we wouldn't have had the Beis HaMikdash. And we never would have had a Jewish king ruling over us. Wow, a soldier has such a great responsibility. Because a soldier has such an important mission. And that mission is even more important than his life. Do the Fayyam understand what it means to be a real soldier? Do they understand how important our mission is? Do we realize what's at stake if we do or do not complete our mission? Before the Eden went into Eretz Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu spoke to the entire Tzivus Hashem for 40 days. Moshe Rabbeinu spoke as a real general. He tells the Yidin, you're about to conquer Eretz Yisrael. You will face giants and nations that are much stronger than you. However, as long as you are committed to Hashem and He is your only King, then you will have His strength and no one will be able to stand up to you. And before they marched forward, like every other army, they made a bris, a treaty. We made a commitment to Hashem that we would be His soldiers. And Hashem made a commitment to us that He would be our Commander-in-Chief, leading us into battle and that He would take care of all our needs. This week's parsha begins, Atem Nitzavim Hayoim. All Yidden are standing today. Kulchem, united as one, like an army united, Lifnei Hashem Elekechem, before the Ebrishter, our Commander-in-Chief, the Commander-in-Chief of all the armies, La'avrcha Bevris, to make a treaty with Hashem. Yes, Yaakov Meishem? What's a treaty? Excellent question. A treaty is an agreement. We commit to Hashem to be His soldiers, and Hashem commits to be our Commander-in-Chief, to lead us into battle and to take care of all of our needs. A Pledge of Allegiance to His King and His Country? What's that? It's a promise that makes His ultimate commitment that He's ready to give up His life. Right! It's this commitment that gives us the strength to stand up to our enemies and put our life on the line. Get it? Get what? It's almost Rosh Hashanah. Um? That's when we make a promise and commitment to Hashem that Ein Lanu Melech, Ela Ata. Wow! And this gives us the inspiration to make that commitment each and every day. So we really are real soldiers. This is our Pledge of Allegiance. I promised Hashem that we're ready to do Messias Nafesh for him. You got it! We came to wish you, Steve and Chassid Matoy. Happy New Year. We're gonna blow the shofar like we do on Rosh Hashanah, which reminds us of the Akedah to take upon ourselves to serve Hashem with Messias Nafesh.
And then we say that okay, that each day we we'll will remind us our commitment and serve Hashem with the service now. We came to wish you Xiva of Good. Very good. We came to wish you A happy and sweet new year. Oh, happy Rosasona. Thank you very much for this. Shirley, you decided to go for it? Yep. I'm committed. Everybody is. Hello. You know what? I was thinking about what you said, and I, I think I'm ready to make that commitment. Hi, Mandy. Hello. Like seeing you bringing back your mission. So happy. Uh, yep, I'm committed. I want to wear the gentleman uniform. Very good. The registration is booming. We have more Kyle registered than ever before. That's great, but it's not just enough to be registered. We need them to be real soldiers. We need to train them to be able to recognize the enemy and provide them with the ammunition that they need to win. 